This video will demonstrate how to connect your FileMaker solution to a weather API, or as I like to call it, a funny thing happened on the way to Fishery Sloping Packets API. We'll be using the same app that we use in our courses for API connection, like MailChimp and Stripe, and the fundamentals. You may have seen it demonstrated in our previous YouTube videos covering iTunes and OMDB. We'll be covering weather, and our end goal here is to have a quick button that we can click that will tell us the weather where the customer is for conversation starters. So let's jump right into our checklist of things that we need. We have our resources. We're going to use darksky.net and they have a good overview here. They do have a place to sign up for free to get your account. And once you have done that, you can log in and this will give you your key which you will need and it's easy to reset so the key we'll be using will be valid after this video they do give up to a thousand free calls per day which is very generous they also have billing if you need more than just those we have an endpoint here it looks like it has some other things in it so we're going to jump to our documentation and we have different kinds of requests here a forecast which is your typical weather conditions which they have quite a few different pieces of information they give back in the response there's a time machine which is kind of cool it goes back in time and tells you what the weather was on a specific date so already we're getting quite a few things on our checklist they do request that if you're going to use it in an app, you have the Power by Dark Sky with a link attached to it. So you want to watch for that. Here are the request types. Here's the forecast request. And this looks like our base URL. So we are going to copy that. And let's paste that into our app as our base URL. Command Z for the formatting. And looks like we have a few pieces of information that we're going to need, which right away is going to lead us down another path. But at least we have these, and we know we have our key, and we have seen some of the available responses, but the parameters look like they must be here. So this is the example a request that we're getting here to get and the URL with the information they also have an additional request parameters here of the key which is required and latitude and longitude you can also exclude some things you can extend things there's a language option with a lot of the two digit codes for the country that you're in they have units if you want to set it for geographic location and some of the speed as well as distance. All of these are different features and they give those parameters. So a lot of very cool things. Uh, here's the time machine request, just adding an additional factor of the time and the example request for that as well, showing some of the parameters. There's an interesting note in the frequently asked questions regarding some of the API calls, and that is, do you have a call that returns the latitude and longitude for a given address, which is needed as one of the parameters? And their response is, unfortunately, not. So this is a function of things like Google Maps or Mapbox and so they give those potential links but they don't have those in the results so we have to have another api call that is going to give us the latitude and longitude and in this instance i found one called open cage data and we'll jump to there and you also can sign up for this very free and has our forward and reverse geocoding. So we have Latin long here, 
or you send the forward geocoding and it returns the lat and long. So we have to do the similar process for this API and you can sign up for free and then you can log in. It takes you to your dashboard, which gives you your key, which you can replace easily. So this will not be active after this video. Once you have your key, you'll go to the API section, which will give you the base URLs that we're looking for. Here's for the forward geocoding with a place name versus if you already have the lat long. There's a lot of information in this API as far as documentation goes, but we are mostly concerned right now about the base URL and then looking at the limits again, the paid usage, as well as the request format. This is helpful at showing what we might need in the way of JSON and other parameters that we're using. So we have our key and then we have Q. So with forward geocoding, which is what we're looking for, they actually have best practices on how to use that as well as all of these additional parameters and just really thorough and robust in what you can retrieve from this including confidence level of how accurate that could be and if you want duplicates and road info on which side of the road you're driving on and then we have our response format as well. Just make sure you're paying attention if this is the reverse or the forwarding because this one has the lat and long and then your key as well as pretty. And then we have the forward geocoding, which is what we want. And here it gives the address. You can see it has a plus sign for spaces. There's commas. And then we have our key and pretty. So all of this is what we want to put into our app. So we'll paste this base URL into our app that has the key information and the additional pretty. We do need the address, so we'll just paste that in. We'll use the address for productive computing. And we already have our key. We have looked at the parameters, so we are ready to test this. So if we put this information in and we will send the request using the insert from URL script step. Then we have our JSON. So now we can look and see what those parameters might be. Using our JSON parser, there's several different pieces of information. We have documentation, which tells us that location. There's rate, there's results here and that looks like it is where we want to go here's one lat and long so let's look at this results and we have two records and it all seems to go under the annotation so we'll look at the first record we have formatted let's look at that that's just the general address and annotations gives us even more information in this what three words which is interesting but we want to go to geometry which gives us our lat and our longitude so this key right here is what we need to use in the json get element with this json returned and this key index or pass so that gets us our longitude and you can see that the two results we got are very similar and then we use this one for the latitude so now that we have our parsing for this one for open cage now we can take this latitude and paste it into our other weather app that actually required the latitude and longitude so we'll put that in as the latitude and we'll paste the other in for the longitude. And then we have to paste in our key that we got and we should have everything we need for our send request. 
it appears that we got a response back so let's take a look at those we have quite a few different things here and currently looks like it has all of the information that we're looking for this is also interesting it gives you the time zone that they're in so that could be useful in another area it gives us the latitude which we gave that to them so let's look at currently and here are all of the list keys that we would want so you can choose any or all of these we know that we probably want the apparent temperature so this key right here is what we want to use with this json in this json get element which we then put in our script so we can put all of this together so we've seen the available parameters we've tested it we know what fields we know the keys we are ready for the script and we did the same thing for open cage they didn't have curl options but we tested it got the available fields and the keys so now we are just ready to put all of this together in a script putting all of those pieces together initially is really the toughest part once you have that then you just have the simple script which we want an address that we're going to pass to it we have to make sure there are no spaces so we're using substitute we have our key for open cage we make that api call with the address and it gives us the address we requested as well our open cage key that is going to give us our lat and long so we put in the key index and path for our response from this first call as well as the what three words since that could be interesting so now we set those variables with that key index path and then we are ready to move to dark sky so we have that key we do an insert from url based on their parameters and the lat and longitude that we found up here and now we have these keys that tell us the current and the general and some other pieces and now we're re actually returning this json get element of the second api call with the keys that we put in place and tying that all together so that now we can put it in our button so we'll close that and we will go to a customer and we have an address but this is our previous address so we're just going to run that script and it instantly tells us that temperature and the code fishery sloping packets this is the three word code but now you can at least ask them if they know the code and maybe you haven't heard of that specific one so we'll just jump back in here this is our final piece of what three words and i had not heard of this before doing this api but they actually have an entire website on creating addresses based on three words so, so your specific address is right down into three words in a very small area so it gets very very specific on a map so you have the same kinds of things you get a free api key and they have their base url that we're going to convert and it also does give a latin long so you could use that if you wanted to and if you haven't seen what three words then you may want to actually take a look at their website and how they convert everything into three words to find out what is the three word description for where you live and if someone happens to know that then this code on their record will actually be 
something of a conversation piece. If not, then you could point them out to this website that has been around for years and never heard of it. But if you want to visit us at PCI, just come to Fishery Sloping Packets. I hope this video helped you understand APIs a little bit. The more you practice them, the more fun they are. And if you really want to get into some detail, then check out our courses at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com and beef up your solutions with the FileMaker API. Thanks for watching.